So you said it's actually been a year since Views came out? Mm-hmm. It seems like just yesterday. I hated that thing. Oh, yeah, I remember. So a little backstory before we get into this one. Uh, we had a three, three people here, and we reviewed Drake's last album, Views, and it was like maybe last summer, and he had that hotline bling. Mm. It was like, oh, that's right. That's why it feels like that. You cause that, that song, Hotline Bling, was like, so consistent you assumed it was like recently yeah yeah so yeah so drake saying he's gotta like have more music coming out so drake canadian r&b singer also light skin rap artist i call him that because he's sensitive you know he's, he doesn't want to he's he's like an r&b singer but at the same time he raps so he's he's got feelings he's got like emotions light skin rapper his latest project has been described as a playlist i put quotes around that because i don't I don't really know what that means. Like, because when you hear playlist, you're like, oh, it's like one of those like 12 tracks albums with all your hit songs that mm-hmm. you buy at like a store because you're too cheap to like, you know, go for like the essentials when you're going to buy something, you know. But they're all new. It's all new music. So it's like, why is it called a playlist? And so when Drake was asked that question, he says basically, it's this album is a collection of songs that become the soundtrack of your life. Like, oh, man. Like, 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 what a f***ing. <laughs> <asshole. laughs> Uh, what makes this album different from the others I found was majority major or uh, from his major releases it was produced by many producers such as like uh, Frank Duke, Murder Beats, T minus Kanye West and so on and so on. Plus the genre of music on here ranges from like R and B to hip hop to like trap to dance hall to Afrobeat, uh, which I think honestly now that I really think about it was what he was doing on the last album anyway. So. That doesn't make it different either. You're telling you're. It sounds to me like you're describing a different album. Okay. <laughs> like I felt like everything. Like you telling me that there's different producers on all this. Yeah. Like yeah. it's so surprising to me because I felt like it all sounded very similar. Yeah. So I'm. I'm I'll give them that. The different producers. It actually literally said it. So I'm like, okay. I believe that makes it different from your to not include it in your discography of like major releases. But the kind of music that was on here. The um, number of tracks, which we'll get into in a second, it sounds like it's the same thing. But if, it, if it's a soundtrack to my life, as opposed to his other albums, we'll find out. When the album starts with the song "Free Smoke," it's like kind of like soft piano intro with a woman belting out like some sweet angelic lyrics before the beat drops and Drake goes on, so he's rapping plethora of bars. And actually, a lyric on that album, I a lyric on that song, I think he's actually taking a shot at Kid Cudi. Okay. Because um, one of the things he says in the song, I actually wrote it down. He says, please come outside the house and show your show yourself so I can say it to your face. If you recall Kid Cudi, when he put that when uh, Drake put out that song um, a couple months ago that we talked about on another show, like uh, Kid Cudi's response was on Twitter. He's like, oh, come say it to my face. So like, all right, I'll just put it in a lyric. And then now mm-hmm. I'm talking about you now. But uh, Drake is the kind of person that when he's taking shots at people. He never said you by name, so you don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just like, you know, an ambiguous, like, you know, jab. And I must say, even though I'm not a fan of trap music, the first two tracks do a, a great job of intertwining the production of dance hall and grimy instrumentation with, like, the hard-hitting bass drops. And then when it gets to that f***ing third track, Passion Fruit, it's like another traditional R&B relationship song that Drake does to serenade over, but the classic smooth like Caribbean Caribbean beat is so infectious I thought that song I love I f***ing love um, Passion Fruit that third song is amazing yeah I kind of liked it too yeah (laughs) in all honesty I went into this really expecting to be like oh this is gonna suck Mm -hmm. and like I'll say that over the whole course of the thing it like it's way too f***ing long Mm -hmm. but that being said like there are definitely some some tracks that work you know for me to say that I feel like was yeah honestly like special I was the same way. Like when I like when it started, I was I didn't think it was gonna be great either, and I was like I'm pleasantly surprised. Like first three songs are really good. Then we get to the fourth song, or maybe the fifth song, the song called um, "Get It Together," it's like dance hall slash like club track. Mm-hmm. British singer uh, Georgia Smith's on there. She sounds kind of like a combination of Rihanna meets like Nelly Furtado, and actually she sings a majority of the song. So Drake's kind of like on the background of that song. I thought that was a great move too because it's like this whole album. I think a lot of the um, guests on there they they do a good job of getting like you know their time to shine on yeah, songs i agree with that and though i was appreciating like the eclectic like um island sound drake was 
I, I like that. But then after maybe six or seven in, I'm like, this album is getting a little, I'm getting starting to lose a little interest into it. Oh, was it on the song Blem? Blem, yeah. I, I don't. This is the thing I don't like about Drake is that he creates his own slang. I mean, now maybe this is not his own. I, I mean, but to me it feels like oh, this is a song about like with this one especially. I tried to read the, some of the lyrics so I thought I was mm-hmm. listening to it. I'm like, all right, let me like try to understand <laughs> what the hell's going on in this thing because I want to make sure that like I either like it for good reasons or hate it for better reasons. Um, yeah. This that was the one song Blem where I was like, are you f-? like this is nothing. Like, yeah. you're rapping about nothing. Like, even any lines, and this is, I think, for the majority of Drake's stuff, is it's like, I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand what you're singing about. It doesn't sound like you're saying anything real. It sounds like you might have, a like, a cohesive thought, but it doesn't. you don't follow through with it. Mm-hmm. And, like, every line could be, like, about something totally different. But, mm-hmm. like, I want to know what I'm blem for real. Means. Oh, what that means is he's high. Blem is like a um, blem is like a slang for like. How you know, do you know this stupid? <laughs> blem uh, because I realized what this whole album is is like when he does like that dance hall stuff. People and maybe myself included are compl- are criticizing him for trying being from Canada and like trying to like incorporate this like English song like voice and some songs and other songs trying to act like he's from straight from the island and he's not. Yeah, he's like reggae. Yeah, and yeah, it's like so. I, I, I'm not mad that he's doing it to for you guys out there. If that's what the song calls for, then I can't really knock him for it. So I'm not saying he's trying to be like, oh, I'm I'm running around here saying I'm from Jamaica. I'm running around here saying I'm from Liverpool. He's not doing that. If that's what the song calls for, that's what he's doing. If he has to actually steal like the actual slang from those those areas, knock yourself out, dude. I don't know, but I had to look it up too. What the f- that I don't, meant too. I just <laughs> I don't like I don't know. To me, it's just it's like gibber. It, like you could. Because who's going to know that other than, like, I mean, I guess he's internationally minded. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, to me, that's just, it's not, it's not genuine. So if it is, like, I don't know. Like, who f-ing says that? Right. Well, I think, like, I, I, I see what you're saying. I agree. And I think, like, uh, going further into the album, like, some of the songs I feel like is is typical Drake stuff to me. Like, mm-hmm. when he's bragging about how great he is on some songs. And how money and cars and big mansions. I there's a song called uh, I can't really say is Gila Gila Chester Gila oh, yeah. Chester, mm-hmm. and he's talking about like you know, I'm not the top five rapper. I'm the top two. I'm like it's a little overzealous, Drake. Come on, like I know like Lil Wayne has taught you to say you're the greatest thing. That's like in the Young Money handbook, but now you're saying fucking bullshit. That's not true. And then uh, the song Portland features a uh, Quavo from the group. Um, Migos and Travis Scott, so I'm like, oh, here we go, another R&B um, trap song, which I prefer when the trap has some difference to it. So I'll, I, it might be good, but it's got that repetitive like flute sample that just keeps going. Yeah, I'm like, this is oh, annoying. That, was, yeah. I, that that song when you because I was I couldn't remember which one it was, but that was the one song I had to f-ing turn off. Like <laughs> I just f-ing skip. Like this is <laughs> it got so f-ing annoying that yeah. flute. You just. It could come and go. It doesn't have to be the whole f-ing song, dude. And it, but there's uh, quite a few like slow jams on here. But one of the songs I really liked on here when he when he slows it down is a song called "Teenage Fe- Fever." Really stuck out when it samples like uh, Jennifer Lopez's like song "If You Had My Love." Electric House beat was pretty good. So I thought so it starts to kind of go up for me. Bring another London rapping on on the song "KMT," and um, grimy little number. He's got the production of like a hood. Young Money uh, song with like hard beat, sinister instrumentation, and aggressive lyrics. And uh, he says a line, and uh, Griggs says, like, could have just slapped man, but he wanted it further. Batman. <laughs> I just I just laughed because that was so ridiculous. But um, the album gets a little better towards the end with like more creative um, hip hop beats and production like the track Can't Have Everything, which features a phone message from Griggs, very Canadian mother. Remember that song it ends and she's like, I don't know what you're doing, eh? You should be doing. She actually didn't say a, eh, but she sounds like she yeah. should should be flat out of the movie Far- Fargo. So she's close. Um, so I'm like, oh well, Fargo is damn close to Canada, so that's probably why she sounds like that. Um, the song Glow, which features um Kanye West and it's got the futuristic production of him. I thought that was a good song too. With I the, really like that. With the um R&B sounds of Earth, Wind, and Fire to end the track out. 
And of course, the poppy R&B hit single, Fake Love, which has been all over the radio. I thought once again, Drake's questioning like who his true friends are because he's so confused. Like, who who do I trust? But it's a good song. I mean, let me put, let me clarify it that way. It's not my forte, but I understand why it's it's on the radio and stuff it's like that. It's not your Kia forte. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go first in my rating. Um, unless you have anything more to add that you that you liked and didn't like on the album. No. I'll, I'll I'll give it a little summation. Okay, so I don't see how this album could be considered a full not another full length release. So I don't get it because it's like it sounds like another Ray Drake album, and I'm really thinking to myself, it's a f-ing PR move mm-hmm. because this could possibly be a bunch of B sides from the last from the view session from last year. And he's like, you know what? Let me grab some of these artists, throw them on some tracks to to, cl- to finish it out. And if I say this is like um. Views B side, no one's gonna buy it because people don't do that in the hip hop community. They do that in like the the rock community. Mm-hmm. So if I call it a, something different, because it's very incohesive, which I which pe people are complaining about that it's not like a a theme. But none of his albums seem like a a whole theme. It's just different topics he always brings up to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, I think this is a PR move. So I'm not gonna give you give you for your semantics, whatever. And same sensitive ass music that he always talks about mixed with thuggish overtones. Um, but the one thing that like he said, soundtrack to my life, this, I don't relate to this at all. This is not my life whatsoever. So <laughs> you're a <laughs> full of <laughs> Drake. But what I do like that makes it unique is all this British artists said he pulled on this album, all the guest spots on this record. I thought, I don't, I don't think from uh, all the albums I heard from Drake, cause I've only heard like views and like, you know, uh, nothing, the one before in 2013, I can't remember the, all the names, but I've heard everything one but like Take the first care. one. I've heard Take Care. I've heard the one <laughs> after that. I heard the one before that. But I haven't heard his first album, and I never heard him put all these like, you know, British artists on a track before. Mm-hmm. So I compliment on that. But other than that, this album has like his usual rapper guest spots like Two Chains, Young Thug, and Lil Wayne. All the features are used to their their best abilities, I think. The majority of the album is great production. And the reoccurring lyrical themes are the same like all your Drake albums. So you're gonna you're probably asking what the what's the problem, Jarrell? And I want to say this out to Drake right now, Drake. If you're listening, which I know you are, what is hurting you is there are, there is no reason for this many tracks in the album. You overzealous. <laughs> this record has 22 tracks, two more than the view album he put out last year. Views, which suffer from the exact same issue. It was too many songs. Yes. Your music isn't that deep. Where you have to like include this much material on a release, so by you thinking someone needs to listen to an hour and twenty minutes of your music straight, straight, is only hurting you from making a great digestible album. So I say, um, so I like some songs, didn't like others, and it's too many tracks. I say uh, once again, you can download this. Um, but when I say that, this is what I mean, you guys who. I'm speaking to the the non-Drake fans because Drake fans, they can listen to like, you know, 10 hours of Drake music and say, you know, the album was too short. Talking to non-Drake fans and people that actually absolutely hate Drake. Uh, What I'm saying when I say download, it means like, you know, make a playlist of your own, grab the 10 or 12 tracks in this album that are good and just listen to that, (laughs) you know, because 22 tracks is way too much. So, Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. It's um like it's good at points. It's it's pretty like I said there's like there was one song I just had to turn off cuz it was just not worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was really annoying. Um I felt like it definitely was too too many tracks and it kind of had the same thing like views I felt like was way too similar throughout the whole thing. Um this one I felt like even when it was I like that there was sort of a there was a variety to it for me in that, in ter- but it's like always the same sound like yeah he this, picked like there's four no, different sounds and yeah like there's it, yeah. no like big ch- difference between the sounds uh, that he uses in any of the tracks but there are different feelings to the tracks so at least it 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 kept it interesting for me in that regard um, and yeah there was a couple songs I thought like this actually isn't that bad like this is good this is the kind of Drake that I could actually listen to I just don't really like his rap flow. Like, yeah. He always does the same thing. Like he's got a couple tricks and he uses them constantly. Right. Um, but that being said, uh, I, I thought it had enough tracks that I thought were decent that 
And the Kanye West one I thought was actually really good. And I did like that he used, like you said, the features on it. It sound, Like that Kanye West song, it sounded like they worked on a song together. Right. It's not just like he does a verse, then he does a verse, end yeah. of the song. You know, like It's like they were actually in the same studio. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that I really appreciated. It felt cohesive and it felt real. And, and I like that there was a diversity to some of the, so- the songs. Um, it kept it a little interesting, even in a really like dull way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say download it. Uh-huh, like you right. said, same thing. Just sort of pick and choose some of the tracks you like and throw the rest of them in the garbage. All right. So let us know what you think in the comments if you heard the new Drake. Um, sorry, the Drake playlist. <laughs> if you liked it or hated it, and what you think your that he's writing? actually like gonna make a 24 hour long album one day <laughs> and that'll be the actual soundtrack to someone's life because they'll Probably, just play yeah. it for an entire day he's he's he thinks he's a, this sh- so i'm sure he'll do something like that get up it's time to go to work <laughs> you know i ain't no jerk <laughs> yeah you should be like you should be like the feature on that um that song anyway the get up go to work you know opening track 